Welcome back to M Hood Fishing. My intentions are the same as the other day. Perhaps you didn't see that video. A couple days ago I was here. Wanted to get something to eat. Because there's some big red ears and other big things in here. But I got cancelled. I got ran off by the rain, right? Didn't really get much. So this is my first video of the day gonna go shoot something else after this but I want to get something to eat first this time it's gonna be full on so you will be there for the cooking but until we get to the kitchen hopefully if hopefully we do get to the kitchen we are going to start off with just a bit of night crawler drop shotting that a little piece about like that haven't changed anything so just like the last time I was doing this it's a size 4 mosquito hook there's gonna be a lot of little things that that hooks gonna be too big for but what I want that hook is fine for and we're using a 3 8 ounce lead not always necessary to use that much lead when you're drop shotting night crawler it depends on the water where you're at but i like this size when i'm drop shotting soft plastics and we may do that in this video however i think if we start with the night crawler we're going to get it done it is just a little bit past noon right now we'll go ahead and get that right there in front of the vegetation Last time I was here, there was current because of all the rain in the area. They were pumping, therefore there was current. Whoa, there we go. There's a fish right off the bat. Now, there are two things, right? I don't know if we want to go one bird, two stones, or two birds, one stone. But we will definitely go with that for bait. try the middle last time I was here they were definitely mostly on the sides out of the heaviest bit of the current what is coming through here did you see that maybe a bass So this is pretty much the solar noon bite that I'm here for. Considering maybe pausing this night crawler drop shot thing. See if I could pick up a bass because that would be good for dinner. Definitely not finding any hits out in the middle. They're probably still hunkered down on the sides. So, yeah, definitely on the sides. That was, looked like a red spotted, quite small though. We'll go back over here. Oh, not that, we were a little too far over there. Not gonna catch much up on the bank. Yeah, there's some fish moving around in here other than what I'm trying to catch. Bass and gar, but mostly bass racing really fast. Let's see if I can get that to come a little closer to that grass right there. Let's see if something's there. I think there is definitely going to be something there. We already had a hit just do that over again and eventually we're going to bang into something worth eating we're, oh yeah still there That was a nice hit, but not quite a commitment to that hook. 
we'll try that again maybe it's just some small stuff in that area here we go again water getting moved it's real shallow right there where those ripples are and over there let's see if we can drop this over there not because i'm hoping to catch whatever made that ripple but curious as to what that fish was doing over there like maybe he's trying to eat gills or something and they're over there but they're probably more likely in the vegetation right oh there we go yeah there's stuff over there kind of hoping that it's just a little stuff hiding in the vegetation and what i want to actually catch is on the edges of it kind of stalking patrolling rather than deep inside it well there we go another piece of bait sometimes you let the universe make decisions for you we just lost that night crawler that i put on so instead of replenishing with night crawler we will replenish with soft plastics and see about taking full advantage of the solar noon bite see if we can pick up a bass to eat instead of a red ear so we're going to use this crappie psychic paddle tail swim bait it'll catch even the red ears along with the bass and somewhere down in there i have crappie bites which is just a little extra enticement so we want to make sure that we start with inserting the hook point in the center up there at the nose there is an indicator of where that is and because i'm drop shotting this i have different options i could always nose hook this or body hook it we're going to kind of go with half and half i want to make sure we're coming out in the center of the back if it's a little off it's not the end of the world there we go that's that is a little off we could always back it out and try to improve upon that and there we go that's a little better right there that it just helps the action if everything is straight and fairly centered but like I said, it's not the end of the world. So there we go. While I was over there with the night crawler, catching a couple pieces of bait, I was busy observing. They're racing back and forth. So we could do this over there where they're active and we could do this over here where they're active. Not so much right here where I'm walking. We could try that, but that's really, really shallow right now. We have a lower level than the last time I was here. So we'll come down this way closer to the bend where it gets a little deeper. Water's not really dirty so I can see the bottom and then I can't see the bottom. And once I can't see the bottom I know my depth is increasing. And we'll, we'll try right here because we can fish that point. The inside of the bend right there. Nice and slow not moving the lead for the most part and when i want to move the lead i just pick it up and gently move it let it come back down let it rest for a second before i shake the line like that on and on so forth and so forth you know repeat repeat it's happened again <laughs> something took the tail off this Just for a second, we'll leave it like that. Kind of looks like a grub. We'll put a crappie bite on.
There we go. Little red ear without the tail, and, but with a crappie bite. Take that off. Switch back to the night crawler. I might go back to trying to see if I can get a bass with what soft plastics I have, but I think for the moment, we'll just go back to this. Gotcha. This is always a bit of fun. Oh, you let go. So this is a small venture down from where I started checking stuff. And because the sun keeps peeking out from clouds, I'm able to see what's up with each pool, see its depth, because the water's not dirty. I think the level has changed drastically since the last bit of rain. So it's a lot more shallow. Maybe those big red ears aren't up here, or they are up here, but not in these shallow pools, whereas they were before in these pools. Well, getting a little bigger. Here we go. Oh. Oh ho ho. That that is what I'm talking about right there. Finally. Wow. Thought we were gonna have to put it off. But we can keep going because we might we might be on to something. At first I thought they just weren't right here. I went looking other places as you saw to no avail. Just filling the bait pail as it was. Now we have something worth eating, but we need more than one. Still of the opinion that night crawlers is what's going to make it happen. Artificials could make it happen too, but I think at a much slower rate right now. Because we're coming out of that solar noon bite for sure. They're just not going to be motivated to hit an artificial as much as a night crawler. Especially if I can get that net crawler right in front of them. This bit of water, this pool, if you will, that I'm fishing, isn't super shallow or super deep. It's all in comparison to everything around it. Back at the corner by the culvert is a deep area on here, but with not much natural habitat going that way for a good ways there are some deeper holes but they're they're not accessible to me right now i can't go to them but in the meantime after this it goes real shallow for a ways so if there's big red ear close to me they're going to be in this stretch right here where i'm at or over at that culvert where it's all concrete. I don't really expect to find them in super shallow water. Like I said, this water's not dirty. It is kind of dirty, right? In comparison to some like some water in some places that's gin clear. However, this water's not so dirty that you can't see with this full sunshine on it. You can see the bottom in places. And you can't really see the bottom where I'm fishing right now. So I know from fishing it over the last 
hour or so that it has fish in it and i can just feel it because of the i can't see the bottom so i know it's deep enough for them to hang out in and it's probably deep enough around these the vegetation that's coming out over the water from the bank deep enough for them to hide in there so it's got to be more than one sizable red ear in here will i bang into it in the next five minutes i don't know not planning on being here forever there is a another session i want to get oh yes there we go nice nice runner but not what i'm looking for for the frying pan but the bait pail for sure we can yeah kind of starting my early catfish session or season off like this cycling in and out like before I go do a river session, I'm gonna look for dinner on a ditch. Some people don't like that. They, oh, 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 here we go. Yeah, you're right. Some people are disgusted by the fact that I am catching dinner on a drainage ditch. They call it a sewer ditch or poopy water. This is uh, Southeast Louisiana. Big parts of this region would be underwater if it wasn't for ditches like this. They're absolutely everywhere. And they drain right into water that you're probably fishing right now for dinner. So not much of a difference between this and something that doesn't look like a drainage ditch because they're all connected here. So down here and in some other places, one man's poopy water is another man's poopy water. Oh, but it's not literally poopy water. No one's pooping in this but fish and raccoons and stuff. I haven't seen anybody come out here to take a dump in the water yet. Maybe somebody, maybe that's somebody's thing. It's not like a public swimming pool, you know, where there's a bunch of people peeing in it, and occasionally there's a odd-looking snicker bar floating in it. I'm sure it's not really out of the question. When I was a kid, I lived in a suburb of Dallas called Plano, Texas. I did a lot of fishing there. It was like when I was 10. Ooh, here we go, we're bringing this little guy, little tiny guy. So I was like 10 and 11, right before my surgery. Yeah, you're right. And whenever it flooded, you know, there was a creek down the street, if I didn't mention, at the end of my street. So whenever that flooded, sometimes the sewer would overflow because I believe at the moment, the storm drains, some of the storm drains connected with the city sewer, you know, where all the poopy water was going. And the main sewage line, one of them ran along parallel to the creek. And at times during massive thunderstorms and flooding, the sewage would overflow and the manhole covers on those lines would pop off and lump fish that we called them, that's what we called them, lump fish in toilet paper would end up in the creek. Now back in the day, here we go, this is almost nice. Oh, he's a twingy, twiny, wrapped up individual. Back in the day, major cities, whereas they were smaller then, they did not have sewage systems. They were, they were making poopy water. From the UK to the US and other places in the world, pooping right in the water. So I lost that fish in the process of getting out of there, but just the fish. But he did give me back quite a mess to figure out. So poop aside, poopy water and all that kind of 
fun stuff. It's not really fun. There's worse things than human feces to be concerned about in your water. Well, I don't expect to run into human feces, not on any scale that's a problem in this particular ditch. But that's not, you know, people love to criticize me for fishing places like this and call it poopy water or I'm fishing in the sewer. When I'm not fishing in the sewer or fishing in poopy water, but there is something to think about or at least talk about. Yes, this is a drainage ditch. It drains a neighborhood. And there's all kinds of things that can get in that drainage water from the neighborhood, such as pesticides, you know, people spraying their yards and stuff. And that can end up in the fish if that fish spends a large amount of time in that drainage ditch. Fortunately, what we're keeping today isn't always up in here. They come up in here to feed and to spawn these red ear. Just like a lot of the bass. The bass don't hang out in here all year round. They come up in here for a particular reason. I'm going to have to shut it down here to do, fix this problem. So just like a lot of water, there are bad things that get in here from the neighborhood. It's not sewage. Oh, there we go. Ah, no. Nope. doesn't necessarily make it so toxic that eating the fish once or once in a while will affect your health. There are drainage, ditch, drainage ditches, however, you could consider far worse than this as far as toxicity levels go. Like drainage ditches that drain an area that is nothing but industri industry, right? And certain industries are drains a lot of farmland and therefore there's a higher level of pesticides in it. There are a lot of places in this country that are so polluted uh, it's not a really great idea to eat the fish or certain fish. Oh, I'm just getting a bunch of bites from little stuff. I, hopefully I get lucky and bang into another or some more big red ears. I think everything's kind of settling down until later this afternoon. Gotcha. Ah, uh, no. Oh, maybe we do have you. Oh. There we go. Nice. All right. Almost want to eat you. Well, I think I'll do the nice thing because you're a little small. You could get a lot bigger. The bite here has seriously dropped back. It is time to take a break from drop shotting for dinner in poopy water to go do something else. Huh. I just wanted to see if maybe I could get a big redder here, but I didn't. All right, the next stop for this video is the kitchen, but the next stop for me is another spot for more fishing and that is another video welcome to the kitchen now get out of the kitchen come on i was saying welcome to the kitchen to them not you come on out of the kitchen
I'm gonna cut these potatoes up real quick first before I cut anything else. So it's in half, then it's in half again, right? And then slice, slice, slice. I'll show you. Cut it in half, cut it in half again. Slice, slice, slice. Planning on roasting these. So I just need a little bit of olive oil in there. When you do this, you can use your hands and whatnot, but it used to get mixed up. I'm not using my hands because I don't want olive oil all over the camera. Any kind of seasoning that you like, you want to throw this in there, right? Or some herbs or whatever, however you want to flavor that. We are using this Caribbean jerk seasoning. You can go as heavy handed as you want or as light handed as you prefer. There we go. So now that I've got that mixed up fairly well, I'm just going to let it sit to the side and marinate because I'm nowhere near ready to pop that in the oven. Beautiful things are happening right now. Here's the fish waiting for me. Here's the oven. I've set it to 400 degrees. It is busy preheating. That's what is beautiful. We are on our way. We have mac and cheese here we got the pot with the water and that is on its way we need that to boil got our frying powder over there that is some spicy stuff let's cut this Ooh, angled down so yeah absolutely no worries <laughs> if my camera camera's not exactly angled correctly no worries i will get there in the end i always do Apologies sometimes, other times it's correct right off the bat. But yeah, you're right. I am starving. I haven't actually eaten anything today. Unless you want to consider cups of tea, sustenance, definitely doesn't qualify. Would have liked to have brought home far more than two but with the potatoes and the mac and cheese and whatever else two is enough <laughs> no wonder <laughs> I was cutting with the wrong knife what is wrong with me that's the price of not eating breakfast <laughs> there are times when you're gonna fast right Maybe, maybe, maybe you don't. But there are times for me when it is appropriate to fast. Today is not necessarily one of those days where fasting is called for. But that's kind of how it ended up. There are people, and I might be even talking to some right now, that only eat once a day. I try to eat twice, if not three times. I don't like big lunches always. Sometimes it's just a light lunch, but eat something in the morning, maybe something in the middle of the day, and then a significant meal. My most significant meal of the day is usually what I am preparing right now. I know quite a few people who don't actually eat breakfast or lunch. I have, I've met a lot of people in my life. I know quite a few right now who don't drink water. And I've met many throughout my life who don't drink water because of whatever reason it has no flavor or they're worried about what fish are doing in the water. Uh. So after I rinse the fish, 
I'll put them on a towel and dry them off, pat them off, because <laughs> it just makes it easier. If they're all wet and slimy, they're going to slide around a lot. Unless you're one of those people who prefers the fillet board with the clip on it. But even then, they're still going to slide around. So I'm letting that tip ride the spine and then I'm going to pass over the spine and I'm going to come out there we go and keep that kind of tilted down to where I can cut close I just heard a beep 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 just want to make sure that these are all kind of separate from each other you don't have to be one way or the other you know as far as how they're laying down kind of evenly spread out 400 degrees I don't know if I said that that's what I preheated to and now 30 minutes is what I want to do in there 30 minutes 30 minutes 30 minutes, plenty of time. So yeah, that's the bowl that the potatoes were in with the olive oil and the Caribbean jerk. This is nowhere near how you would normally fry stuff, you know, as far as dredging and everything. But this works, you don't necessarily need egg or milk really just put stuff in here to kind of let it marinate while I was doing other things like why waste it right we just kind of sprinkled some of that in there just kind of get it danced around okay we got some of that danced around in there soaking up that oil and other moisture put just a little bit more in there same thing just a little more eventually we're going to get this good coating on there it should crisp up nice might not be perfect but we are going to get as close as possible see that see that that's what we're looking for see how it's kind of getting to the point where it's just <laughs> in the hood has to sneeze it's no longer sticking it's just kind of jumping around in there got this nice coating on there sticking and everything okay we just let that sit that's that's where I want it using olive oil tonight to fry that means you can't up that heat too much olive oil burns at a much lower heat than other things so it's more of a slow fry right on time those potatoes are ready to come out oh my olive oil is not necessarily hot though but it's getting there it's all good just kind of dance it around a little bit shut it down sort of you know cover it up not shut it down so one thing i forgot to mention is that i've upped the heat i'm on medium now literally what i'm trying to achieve here is a slow fry let's go ahead and get these out Woo! fog it up fogged up no more look at that yummy that oil is there now Yeah, these are going to get crispy. Notice I don't have that much oil in here because I don't need that much oil for this. You don't necessarily need to drown fish in oil to fry it. 
coming along nicely. Oh, well, if it's breaking up, you know you're really close to being done. All right, we're going to call that done. I'm going to come right over here to this beautiful plate of potatoes and mac and cheese. Get that kind of dressed out on top of the mac and cheese right there. This frying powder that I use, it's like Zatarans with Tabasco. Whoa. <coughs> <coughs> Sneezing and coughing in this video. Whoa. Hopefully that's nothing ominous. This is uh, sweet and sour red cabbage. Use it like a condiment. Ketchup. Go for a piece of fish. So you're gonna have some red cabbage on it, some sweet and sour cabbage. Mmm. Nice and crispy. Yeah. Spicy. But the worst part of it, you know, was cooked out. I tasted the the powder because I just had it in the freezer in a Ziploc bag and I was like what frying powder is that and I tasted it I was like whoo that's that hot one whoa oh oh wait a minute whoa whoa my goodness that's that kind of hot stuff that you don't it's not hot at first it comes later whoa it is hot I thought maybe I cooked a the heat out I did not mmm potato mm. the mac and cheese is good but you know it's just that excuse me it is good but it's the the cheapest mac and cheese pretty much the family deluxe with the, you know, the, mm, the packet you squeeze in there. Wow. Mmm. Yeah. Mmm. Let's go. Let's go in there and sit down and eat this, but, I mean, I'm gonna go in there, sit down and eat it, you know, out of respect, sit down and eat. Sometimes you just stand in the kitchen or over the kitchen sink and eat something But a full-on meal like that You should sit down Sometimes you need to put a jacket on but no need for a jacket Tonight. Yeah, you're right. Hey, I really appreciate you watching and all that good stuff and I will see you next time